It's time once again for our Between the Rows profiles. We're visiting with John Shum in Seneca County. Uh, we got we got some early corn out, and we had some planter trouble, and, uh, and I'm glad that we did. Uh, kept us off that colder ground, and got corn planted on time, and, and we were planting soybeans at the same time, and uh, everything come up really, really well. And, and then um, we've had weekly rains all the way through July, and it was like uh, irrigated acres. So uh, things took off really well, and with all the heat units, why things made for an early fall. Shum had a wet planting season that created some challenges early in the year. We turned off really wet uh, the week of 19th and 20th of July. I had about five and a half inches of rain here overnight, and uh, it affected our soybeans somewhat. And then we turned off dry around the 20th of August and uh, a few of our crops around here, especially on this limestone ridge that goes through this area, uh, hurt our soybeans a little bit, but I don't think it did too much to our corn. The farm uses cover crops and sees several benefits from that. Well, I've got a couple of neighbors that uh, were doing it long before me, so I had something that I could watch and then we've been doing it now next year will be our 13th year and uh, found out it's good for our soil uh, help with our drainage and uh, our dewworms come back like you wouldn't believe and, our, and we got rid of our water issues so in order for my son and i who both work jobs and try to do farming in order to farm we had to try to get larger and in order to get across some acres uh, without all that tillage it's easily done uh, in years past when we had wheat, we uh, usually double cropped them into soybeans and always had good luck because our frosts anymore don't seem like they come until uh, early November. And then uh, we use groundhog radishes where we can and that uh, seems to do a really good job. And now with uh, some of the wheat we are going to uh, put out rapeseed which we started last year and we really like that. So. I've got a field just north of my barn here that's rape. I've got some snapshots of some farmers that I work with that uh, was putting their cereal rye on with the drill. And if they would run 100 feet or 30 feet short, they'd have a square section of mare's tail. And where they had cover crop, it was just as clean as a whistle. So we are using it for some weed control. You know, that's a benefit of it. But on a dry year, uh, the cereal rye really shines because that holds a lot of moisture and it gets us through some of that dry spell. When it comes to cover crop in the future of the operation. Well, I think we're going to stay with the cereal rye and we're working with rape. Uh, the rape seed could have an issue of winter over. You know, if you don't get it in on time and it doesn't get very tall, it can have a winter kill. Uh, we've lightened up a little bit on our cereal rye uh, pounds per acre. Uh, I think it did what we wanted it to do and we're lighting it up a little bit now just because uh, in the spring, uh, maybe so later on in the fall, it can stay too wet. You know, if, you're, if you have a, a wet May, you, you might stay too wet and not get it seeded on time, but we try to plant, we will plant everything standing up. Between the Rows is powered by Seed Genetics Direct, a family owned company meeting the corn, wheat, soybean, alfalfa, and herbicide needs of Corn Belt farmers. Value, knowledge, performance. It's in their genetics.